Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're gonna to talk about the offensive side of the ball. We've talked a lot about defense and going heavy defense, but your real realistic thing is the Cowboys, they have been taking a look at some, some guys here on offense that we need to consider. That way, when the draft comes and we hear some of these guys' names, we're not caught completely off guard and in complete shock. Okay, so I have a list here. I have a slide here that has all the players that the Cowboys have taken a look at through this process. Of course, Senior Bowl, Combine, Workouts, Pro Days, and the official 30-day visits. All right, so I have a slide here that breaks this down so we know which guys in particular the Cowboys are looking at on offense. All right, so let's take a look at this slide here real quick. Let's take a look at this. All right, so here we go. I have this. I pretty much parsed this out of my other um, out of my other list of guys and just took out all the offensive players and ranked them in here. And let's let's talk about this, okay? So right off the bat, OJ Howard and David Njoku, tight ends, they met him at the combine. Mike Williams, they met him at the combine. So um, you know, there's some interest there. Um, now these two, next two guys here, Curtis Samuel. He is high on their list, all right? So they brought him in here. This guy gives them um, flexibility at the running back position and at the wide receiver position. All right, what I really like about Curtis Samuel is this. He gives us protection and insurance in two position groups. First one, obviously, is wide receiver. And the second one is running back, all right? So he can make plays in the passing game, he has a lot of yards, good hands, breakaway speed, and he can get open shifty um, yards after the catch. So he can do that in the receiving game. So if the Cowboys, you know, for whatever reason, knock on wood, something happens at Dez, we have a backup guy there at wide receiver. Okay, so you would have Curtis Samuel, Terrence Williams and Bryce Butler. We saw what happened when um, Dez was out and we only had Terrence Williams and Bryce Butler. Terrence Williams couldn't step up and couldn't do anything too much on Beasley. They shut him down. Everybody was shut down. So if Dez goes away, this offense is going to be hurting even with uh, Zeke in there. Okay, so they got to think about this guy here. And... He would be a legitimate pick, okay? Now the question is, how high do you take this guy, all right? So my question is, where do they have him on the board, right? So do they have him high on the board here where if their guys are getting wiped out in the first round, do they consider taking him at 28, all right? This, like I said before, we, we covered this guy a couple, a couple of weeks ago, and this guy would be a prime example of a surprise first round pick for guys. Luckily, we've been talking about a lot of prospects here, so anybody that's been following the channel wouldn't be surprised by this name. Come draft, you know that this guy's a playmaker, okay? Um, and of course, everybody has their opinions. Some people don't like him, some do. Um, I happen to like him, and if his name were to be called at 28, depending on who was on the board and who was off the board, um, it would grow on me, okay, to be honest, all right? So. That is an interesting pick there. The other guy here, let's take a back, look at the slide here again. Adam Shaheen, all right? This guy's a gigantic tight end. We talked about tight ends early on in the process. The sweet spot for the Cowboys, 6'6". Six, six. A lot of the, uh, the tight ends that they've drafted have been 6'6 six, six in height and size. And this guy fits that mold to the T. He could do something here for the Cowboys, obviously. And... There's, there's no secret, you know, the Cowboys, they do have some potential issues here at tight end. Witten, of course, durable as can be. Um, but the other guys are banged up. Every single one of them, Jeff Swain with a fractured foot, same fracture that, that Dez had. So we got to see how he recovers here. They're going to have to, you know, uh, bring him along slowly. Otherwise, he can refracture it. And then he's a done deal for the season. James Hanna, Brome Bruce. AKA microfracture. We'll have to see his, his, um, it'll be interesting to see if he participates in anything 
here in the offseason uh, mini camp or anything like that. If he doesn't, that won't be a good sign, okay? So we'll see how he does. And of course, you have Rico Gathers. I like the swagger from him. He's presuming himself to be the heir to Witten. Let's see if it's true. That would be really good if he is. Let's hope that's true, okay? But still, regardless, you got, you got to keep this offense running on all cylinders. And that means possibly taking this guy, all right? Where would I take him? Adam Shaheen, he's really, he's really gone up draft boards really um, a lot. When this whole process started, I had him in a fourth round. And uh, he's creeped up a lot of draft boards. People have him going in the second. I think the Cowboys... They will probably draft him in the second or third round, but uh, you never know. All right, the Cowboys, they do not grade players how all of us grade them. You know, the armchair scouts and the scouts that we watch on TV. You know, the Cowboys, when they have a draft pick name called, a lot of people are, say that they're reaches. It, it happens almost all the time, okay? So let's keep that in mind whenever the Cowboys are getting their their picks out here the Cowboys know what they're doing Will McClay he's gonna button up that draft board and whoever they call we're gonna get to work and we're gonna start kicking some people's asses this year okay I'm really pumped about this draft I hope all you guys are as well trust in the process trust in Will McClay we're gonna be fine with everything no matter who we take whether it's offense in the first defense in the first what have you these picks are gonna help the team all right so let's get back to the list here other guys here the next guy here Dion Dawkins all right so I have him here color coded here in a light green this to me the minimum at the combine the minimum at the pro day all right this guy is is can go anywhere from the second round third round I think by second round he goes this guy reminds me a little bit of Eric Williams with a little bit of Larry Allen in him. Comes from Temple. These guys play with a with an aggressive demeanor. And that's what this guy is too. Um, and he's versatile. You can put him at guard, you can put him at tackle. This guy can do something for the Cowboys. Take him in the second round. Let's get to work. Compete there. Push him against Chaz Green. If Chaz Green doesn't want this job, let one of these guys take it. Uh, Byron Bell or, or Deion Dawkins, all right? The whole thing about this draft, we have bodies everywhere, right? But along with that, when you draft these guys, you're looking to upgrade, okay? So whoever's on the team right now may not be on the team by the end of this. And we're talking about training camp in the preseason. That's what roster cuts are all about. All right, so... We have a lot of players. We have them in a lot of positions. And, uh, you know, some people won't make the team. So, we'll see what they do there. They could they could easily take this guy here, second round guy. Don't be surprised if they take him. And he'll give position flex. That's what Jason Garrett loves to use. Position flex. He gives him that. Go put him there at left guard. Let's say Lyle Collins has an awesome gear. He's going to be a restricted free agent, but since he was undrafted, he can accept an offer sheet. If the Cowboys don't match the offer sheet, he is sayonara, all right? He is out the door, okay? So we got to be prepared for that. And that's what we've been talking about in this draft. You're drafting for now and for need, but you're also drafting for potential future departures, all right? You're taking all these into account when you're drafting. So Deion Dawkins would fill a lot of needs here, okay? Uh, Jake Butt, tight end, Michigan, met him with the combine. This guy would be a partial red shirt. He's expected to be back during the season, so expect him to be on pup to start the season and IR with the return designation. So you will get something out of Jake Butt. He won't be a full blown red shirt. That's something some people need to keep in mind here. So, yes, he would miss some games, but he wouldn't be a full-blown red shirt like Jalen Smith. So, if you take him, he could make he could be in there back for the run, all right? Say so we're in the thick of it in the playoff run. Add this guy with Witten. We're in business, all right? So, for him, for me, I would take him in the fourth, all right, if he was still there. And he might be, all right? 
A lot of teams want guys to start now. And then some teams, they don't really utilize the tight end. Some teams are starting to get around to it. And, um, but some, some teams aren't, all right? So he's, a, he's an option, but he's not high on the list. They only met him at the combine, right? Okay, so let's look, let's look back at this list. Juju Smith-Schuster, all right? This guy, USC, the Cowboys have a lot of interest in him. 30 visit, you know, he came in here, they met with him. And they like this guy a lot, okay? So, um, some people are going to say, why do we need him? We just signed Terrence Williams to a, a deal here, four-year deal. Well, you look at the numbers here closer for Terrence Williams. After year two, you can pull the shoot and get out of that contract, okay? So, um, Terrence Williams needs to step up here. Um, he's had some boneheaded plays here and there. He makes plays. He's just as consistent body catcher. We know the story. All right. Turns swims. He has uh, peaked. And it really is time to look for another option here. Dez isn't getting any younger. We got to we gotta get these guys to the Super Bowl. All right. They're, these wide receivers, they fall off after 30. And Dez is getting there in the late 20s. We got to hurry this thing up. All right. We got to get him in there. Um... So he might be a selection, okay? High production, good hands, playmaker for the, for the Trojans there. One of the better USC wide receivers that has come out. They have a lot of guys that come out that uh, just have not done that good in the NFL. But Juju Smith looks like the real deal to me. And he's on the Cowboys list, high priority list, all right? Let's look at the rest of this guys here. Ethan Posick, all right. Ethan Posick, the center from LSU, pro day visit. They like this guy. They like him a lot. All right, this guy's played every position on the line. Kind of like Zach Martin, all right. In that Zach Martin, when he was at, uh, at Notre Dame, he played a lot of the positions there. Very versatile, and the Cowboys love the position flex. All right, so. He's a center, listed as a center, but he can, you know, move it to guard, left, right guard, and he has tackle experience as well. This guy could come in here and be a uh, an upgrade at the position. And like we say, for any future departures or any shuffling, plug him right in and we're good to go. All right, so, and I think, you know, we are gonna need some, some quality depth on the offensive line. You know, I think we're going to be fine at right tackle with Chaz Green and Byron Bell. But guard, the depth there is is not that good. All right, so put Posick in there. The thing about him, you're probably going to have to grab him in the second or third round. Probably second round. I don't think the, I don't think he'll be there at 92. But possibly, if he's there at 92, the Cowboys might consider him, okay? And... You know, for anybody that hasn't been watching any of the coverage here, if you hear the name Posick, a center, third round, some people will be like, what the hell are we doing? A center, we already have Travis Frederick locked up for years. Why are we drafting this guy? Well, the reason is that, just what I said, the flexibility, guard, center, your swing, your swing guy. I mean, he fills all positions. They can be a starter at guard. All right. Now... <clears throat> Let's look at some of these other guys, okay? Amara Darbo, wide receiver in Michigan. They met him at the Senior Bowl. Can be had in the third round. CBS rank has him in the third round draft production. Adam Biznawati, Senior Bowl. They met with him there. I think he had a good he had good practices at the Senior Bowl. If you're watching the coverage. Uh, but when the game came on, he had some difficulty with some of the uh, edge rushers. But this is the kind of guy that you would draft in a later round. All right. Probably more like a uh, fourth round guy. And that's the same round that they got Doug Free in. Okay. So when you start getting these guys in later rounds, you're getting, you know, the talent is kind of dropping off. And the offensive line talent in this draft is, is mediocre. I mean, there are guys. There will be guys out there. But... It's not one of the better uh, draft classes for offensive line. Biznawati, he'll be a fourth round guy. So keep an eye on that guy. All right. Didi Westbrook, we talked about him a couple times here already. Um, Bolitnikov winner. 
high production his senior year. He came out of the shadows of Sterling Shepard and really balled out. Good player there. Deep threat. Could be a, a, a big weapon for Prescott and company. I would consider him, okay? And, um, you know, if he's there in the fourth round, he might be another one of these guys they pick up, all right? So keep an eye on him. Julian Davenport, all right? This is the one that's really interesting to me. Long arms. Has a um, has high upside. I don't think he'll start this season, but this is somebody that you would groom, all right? And if we're looking at somebody to groom, it would be for the right tackle position. Chaz Green, we know about him. Byron Bell, he's on a short-term deal. More of a bridge player. If if Byron Bell takes over the position and Chaz Green can't beat him out, we're in trouble. That means Chaz Green is no good, and it will be time to move forward. So getting uh, Davenport here, let him get in the NFL under Six strengthening program. Get his strength up, because that's one thing about him. Um, he didn't have a much of a bench press, so he's got to get stronger there. Definitely needs to get stronger, but everything else, very durable player, like I said. Four-year starter, didn't miss a single game in the same vein of a Zach Martin. And that's one thing that you're, that you're, um, that these guys like. They like these durable offensive linemen, or they, they want to get these guys that are durable, you know, like, like we talked about Postic and, you know, Julian Davenport especially. So, CBS has him ranked as a fourth to fifth round. Cowboys, I could see I could see the Cowboys drafting him earlier. And, of course, draft analysts will say it's a reach. But let's not listen to the noise. Go with what these guys know, okay? Will McClay knows what he's doing. For me, I think maybe a third round pick for him. But uh, definitely a guy that could be called here um, in the second day. So let's keep an eye on that guy there, Julian Davenport out of Bucknell. All right. And then the other guy, Corey Clement, Senior Bowl. I, I really like this guy. I really like Corey Clement. He's got low mileage. Um, he can run the ball really good. Comes out of that Wisconsin zone scheme. So putting him in the Cowboys offense would be seamless. He'd be a good back to give uh, Zeke a breather here and there. Get us younger at the running back position, all right? So we'll see what they do there. He's one guy to consider. They met him at the Senior Bowl, all right? Now, this next guy is one of my favorite guys, all right? Donnell Pumphrey, all right? I love saying that guy's name for some reason. I don't know why. I hope they always add this guy somehow. It would be good if we could get another fifth round pick. I'm sure the Cowboys will find a way to move back into the draft with future picks. And if they could get this guy in the fifth round, that would be awesome, all right? But if they don't, this guy could be considered in the, in the fourth round, all right? Now, you know, we've talked about him. He's got, um, he's 5'8", uh, 170 or so. So he, he is he's a smaller, smaller guy here but very lethal in the offense all right Scott Linehan would utilize this guy and I know Scott Linehan wants to get a playmaker like this they tried uh Lance Dunbar but Dunbar couldn't run he, he just couldn't run okay so he was one dimensional now with this guy you can put him back there all right um and make plays he'll be hard to see shifty and home run hitter all right so you get this guy out in space and he, he's gonna tear the, up the secondary okay so Donnell Pumphrey San Diego State broke all of Marshall Fox records I wouldn't mind having that guy okay so they have high interest in this guy too not a 30-day visit but they did meet with him twice one in the combine and at the pro day the interest is relatively high there all right <clears throat> the next guy here we're gonna talk about Eric Saubert Talked about him a couple of times, having in a couple of my mock drafts. Tied in out of Drake. CBS has him in a fifth to six. Okay, so Cowboys met with him at the pro day. They have interest in here. He can catch the ball, big hands, good size, um, 
and somebody with upside, okay? Somebody that could learn under Witten. He can run block, but he can improve there, right? So this guy is one of my favorite sleeper picks. Comes from a, a smaller school, Drake, okay? Do right and kill everything. So uh, let's keep an eye on that guy, all right? So the next guy, Dan Skipper. Offensive tackle out of Arkansas. This is a really tall guy. We've talked about this guy. 6'10", 6'11". He's, he's, he's really tall, so he can use that to his advantage, but also to his disadvantage if he gets caught with a bull rush. His uh, balance can, can come off and, you know, he can get taken advantage of. But he can also use that link to brush off guys and just push them out of the way and, you know, open up the door for the running game, provide pass protection, be a later round guy. And then um, he would be a later round guy for me as well. Hey, uh, CBS has him ranked fifth to sixth round, and I think that's that's about accurate for me. Um, the next guy, Aaron Jones, UTEP, University of Texas El Paso, very high production. They met him at the combine, and they gave him a workout here recently. So they really like this guy. All right, and. I think somewhere in this draft, the Cowboys, they would like to add a running back, all right? I think I think they have some some remorse here by letting Darius Jackson go and keeping Lance Dunbar here. What a waste. They can make it up here with, with a guy here. Um, you know, any, any of these running backs that they're taking a look at, uh, they're good. Good players. Corey Clement, Donnell Pumphrey. And Aaron Jones, I think, would be an, uh, an absolute steal if you can get him in a later round. This guy runs all over the place, does everything. Catch the ball, run the ball, breaks tackles, <clears throat> good balance. And the three games I watched from him, thoroughly impressed. I could see him doing some damage here in, in our uh, running scheme. And uh, definitely provide Zeke with a breather. And... You know, they'll, they'll get him involved um, in all phases of the game. I think the Cowboys really like him, you know. Otherwise, why would they give him a workout? There's interest there, okay? So keep an eye on that one. Katie Cannon. <clears throat> when we're talking about D.D. Westbrook, um, you know, some people said that Katie Cannon is a just as good as uh, D.D. Westbrook. But, uh, you know, he, people can have that discussion. But uh, anyway... Katie Cannon out of Baylor. He's got speed. Um, they took a look at him at the pro day. So there is interest there. Late round pick for him. Could be a steal though. You never know. Some of these guys, you know, they can perform better when they get out of the pro, uh, out of the NFL. I mean, <laughs> when they get out of college, all right, <laughs> they can perform better at the next level. All right, so keep an eye on that guy. Chad Williams out of Grambling. Cowboys have high interest here. Okay, so they have a private visit with him. Off-field issue, we talked about that. That's why he wasn't at the Combine. Um, but other than that, very productive player. Has big hands. Production. He's got speed. He's a little raw, though. Okay, his route running is a little raw. But uh, put him in here with Derek Dooley. I, I can tell you this. Derek Dooley, our wide receivers coach, is dying, is dying to get a wide receiver drafted. You see him in the draft room year after year, passing on wide receivers, and it's killing him. So I know at some point he wants to get a guy in here to groom. They'll have they'll have some options here, okay? Mike Williams, Curtis Samuel, Juju Smith, Didi Westbrook. Katie Cannon and Chad Williams. And the next guy we're going to talk about, Fred Ross, all right? We all know the story here. Dak Prescott's number one receiver in 2015 at Mississippi State. Do they draft him here, use a late-round pick, and rekindle that magic, all right? So this is another guy that would be considered more of a slot guy, has speed. You get him the ball, and he can break away and make touchdowns, all right? So, um... He catches the ball, 
Um, he does have some body catching to him as well, though. So, I mean, you're getting a receiver this late in the round. They're going to have pros and cons, and that's one of them, the body catching. So, But he will catch the ball uh, mid-flight, too. So, But has some drops as well. Um, but get him here in a late-round pick. See what he does, all right? See what him what him and uh, Dak can do at the next level together. It could be something special, all right? So the other guy that took a look here, Greg Ward Jr. out of U of H, University of Houston. The quarterback there at Houston, projected to be a wide receiver at the next level. Uh, they met him at the combine, all right? So probably more of a, uh, a free agent. Uh, I don't see him getting drafted. Probably a priority free agent. Uh, camp body, bring him into a uh, rookie mini camp, that kind of thing. But uh, that's it, guys. This list here that we're looking at, w let's take another look at it. They're um, these are big names, okay? They, you got big names on this offensive guy. They're they're not bringing these guys in for for nothing, okay? So although we do need defense, and we say we we have to go heavy defense, don't be surprised if the Cowboys. You know, sprinkle in some offense. And don't be surprised if they go offense with the first pick in the first round. That would really throw people for a loop, wouldn't it? But let's keep that in mind whenever these names are starting to get called out. All right, so these are some names to look out for, okay? There'll be others here that the Cowboys have met with along the process that haven't been revealed on offense here and also on defense. But these are the ones that we can confirm, all right? So let me know what you guys think. Of this list here, who wouldn't you mind the Cowboys drafting, all right? Who would you want to stay away from? Or who do you really covet the most here from these guys here, okay? These guys that are confirmed to be uh, interest of the Cowboys, all right? Let me know in the comments, and we'll see you here for the next video. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate everybody's comments and everybody that's been following me through this draft journey like we said early on and the draft primer video it's been fun all right we're getting closer to it we're almost there all right so we'll see you for the next video thanks guys